after all these years of searching and all these unanswered questions and all these failed therapies, that this is what finally answered all of our questions and turned it all around for me. Jenny and if you're new here so happy to have you thanks for stopping by and if you're back welcome back glad that you're here I hope you're all doing wonderfully I am in the middle of a five to possibly six part series on the different types of headache disorders that I have um, related to Ehlers-Danlos syndrome uh, that I've been diagnosed with and um, if you have Ehlers-Danlos you know that we are um, prone to many different types of headaches so that's that's what I'm discussing and tonight I wanted to talk about atlantoaxial instability and just my my journey with it. Um, I was misdiagnosed with, with chronic daily migraines and also, well I have occipital neuralgia, but that was what was thought to be going on with me up until 2017 when I received the proper diagnosis of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and had never even heard of atlantoaxial instability until I started meeting more people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and it I heard it mentioned frequently and um, so yeah that's when I started to suspect it but it um, and basically what it is is the atlantoaxial joints are your first two cervical vertebrae so C1 and C2 um, they are responsible for for supporting your head and rotating and turning those two vertebrae vertebrae are and so the C1 vertebrae is uh, it's also called the atlas, C2 also called the axis, and then with that, and of course there's the facet joints, but with that are two very important ligaments called the transverse and the alar ligaments, and they're responsible for not only supporting the head, but also for rotation of your head, nodding, um, flex flexing and extending, so they are very important, they're crucial ligaments. And so when they are damaged um, from something like being loose anyway with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or whiplash, a concussion, a jolt to the head, any, anything that, um, that, can da that damages those ligaments, then it, it inhibits the ability of the head to be stable. So um, I was diagnosed with atlantoaxial instability, I'm sorry, in 2018 by my neurosurgeon. There's actually only two to three in the U.S. right now that are specialized in this that actually do the, the the fusions, the surgeries, and not many not many doctors are familiar with this. So I uh, my my neurosurgeon's on the East Coast, Dr. Fraser Henderson Henderson, um, and so yeah, like I said, I had never heard of it um, prior to getting to know people in the Eller Stanlos community and hearing about their experiences with it. And I've also been in two car accidents, so whiplash is, is a, uh, a cause of the atlantoaxial instability. And being that I have Eller Stanlos, um, I knew that, you know, that that was a very likely, very likely um, cause, but I didn't know for sure until the diagnosis, of course. So um, my atlantoaxial instability was diagnosed by, um, I, it's usually, it can be diagnosed by upright MRI, rotational 3D CT scan, or digital motion x-ray. In my case, it was diagnosed with the, the 3D CT scan rotational, which I also had to travel out of state. They don't offer it in my state. And uh, the digital motion x-ray, I, I also had to travel out of state to get that as well. There are not many centers that do that right now or there weren't when I had my last one anyway, which was in November of 2018. So, um, but the MRI and the CT scan are the, the gold standard or what the doctors prefer to use. And then they will take those images from, from the, you know, from those imaging types and do measurements and, and that, and it'll go over, you know, your, your whole clinical picture and diagnose it from there. So, Right now, I am, um, so basically the recommended treatment is, is kind of like with anything else, conservative measures at first. So rest, 
NSAIDs, pain management, muscle relaxers, physical therapy, dry needling, and of course I've done all those. I haven't done the dry needling because I've got the neurostimulator and um, the physical therapist wasn't comfortable with it, but I had done everything suggested. And so Dr. Henderson recommended a fusion, a C1, C2 fusion. Um, and uh, I, so I scheduled my surgery and as it was approaching, I just didn't have a piece about it because we were also still trying to roll out a CSF leak in my situation. And we, we didn't have resolution with that. And the two conditions have so much crossover and symptoms. I just, I, I wanted to make sure positively before I had this big surgery that we for sure could cross CSF leak off the list. So I postponed it and as the year went on, uh, my symptoms are actually by October of last year, they just got so much worse, which I didn't even know was possible. I woke up one morning in like, ten, if you go up the pain scale, definitely 10 pain, but to me it was beyond that. I've had natural childbirth and this pain was worse than that. And I did everything that I could do to relieve it and nothing at all was helping. It didn't matter what position I was in. It, it did help if I was reclining in the recliner. Um, that was the only way though, because if I was flat, it was worse. Um, upright, of course, worse. So I reached out to all of my doctors and my neurologist at the time, um, she believed, and she still does actually, um, that it was a combination of possibly the leak, but um, my, my migraines, my TMJ, instability, she, she, you know, because I had already, she knew that it was instability, but also nerve entrapment and cervical radic um, radiculopathy. So lots of nerve um, damage just had sort of just gone crazy, gone awry. So I, my, Dr. Henderson suggested a collar and I had already tried the Aspen Vista. So I wasn't very, um, you know, I, I wasn't very hopeful. Uh, but I had heard a lot of good things about the Miami J collar and people, and that's what this is, and people that didn't have luck with the Aspen. So I tried that and it was a lifesaver, a legitimate lifesaver because I was pulling out my hair in pain and tears. I couldn't sleep. I really felt like I was going crazy because the pain was so severe and it would not let up. So I saw, um, I went back to Dr. Henderson in December of last year. And of course I had to have more imaging, updated imaging, so another digital motion x-ray and another CT scan. And he discovered that I actually had further damage, so lower level instability as well as that lanto instability. Um, and so recommended a, it said that I would need a fusion now, not only from you know C1 and C2, but at the lower levels as well. So essentially C1 through C7. Um, but he did want me to try something that he suggested trying something that I had not tried, which is uh, prolotherapy stem cell injections, PRP, to see a doctor and get a consult about that and see if they would be able to help me. So currently, that's actually what I'm doing. Um, I, I have had one set of injections and I, I go to a place called Regenix in Colorado and they did the, the lower levels inject, lower level injections first, so the C3 to C7, um, because the C1, C2 injections are more risky and, and come with more, more risk, so they like to try the, you know, to, to avoid that if possible. So what I did was had, um, so it's a stabilization procedure basically. It helps to heal those ligaments, uh, to restore the normal function, our motion, I'm sorry, to the upper 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 cervical region. I can't talk, um, which will relieve the pinching of the vertebral artery and the occipital nerve. And I'm having symptom. My symptoms related to this are so because it it pinches because the instability um, occludes and pinches the vertebral artery. You will get autonomic nervous symptom autonomic nervous system symptoms. Um, so POTS type symptoms, dysautonomia, orthostatic intolerance, heat intolerance, um, the tachycardia, sort of mast cell type symptoms, and of course was having all those, they're substantially worse since my condition has, has worsened. 
Um, and then of course, uh, the, the pain, the constant head pain, neck pain. Um, in my case, it, it hurts. It's, it hurts all the way across my skull, but it, it feels so. It feels like someone's hit me with a baseball bat, and then it feels like um, at that right at that level where the skull meets the neck, it feels like someone is stabbing me with a hot poker and twisting it is the best way to describe it. And then it radiates or shoots to above and behind my left eye, and then it feels like a throbbing, aching on the left side of my head, and then of course my neck stays in a like pretty much almost continuous spasm. Um, it, your, your ligaments are not doing their job, so your muscles step in and they, they try to do what the ligaments are not and that leaves them in a constant spasm. So um, the spasms, um, light sensitivity, sensitivity to sound, nausea, vomiting, balance issues, gait, um, gait in, in, like it, having trouble walking, coordination, um, it, it causes a lot of symptoms, a lot, and so, um, but the main thing is the head, the head and neck pain, and so, anyway, these stabilization procedures are supposed to repair the ligaments, and, you know, like I said, it unpinch the occipital nerve and unpinch the, the vertebral artery so that those are reversed, so the doctor that I'm seeing suggested a stem cell stem cell injections and what it is is marrow is drawn from the hip from your hip and then it's um, they centrifuge it they make an injection through the back of your throat to reach the alar and transverse ligaments and then um, they use contrast to make sure that they're they're in the right area under fluoroscopy um, he said that he had found better, they have found better improvement with stem cell and with PRP as opposed to prolotherapy. So that, that was recommended for me. And then also PRP, which stands for platelet-rich plasma. Um, and they just take, they separate the plasma from the stem cells and they inject that in the same area, but separately. And so I had my first, and then of course prolotherapy is dextrose. So. Um, <clears throat> I had my first round of injections in April and it does take three to six months to see the full benefit for your body to see if your body's going to, um, if it's going to do the healing that, that we're trying to do. So far it hasn't, it has, we haven't seen the benefit that we were hoping for. So I will be going back in the next few months to be re, uh, to do the upper two cervical vertebrae. Um, and I'm really hoping that works if it, it he did warn me it will likely take multiple injections because of the extent of my instability. So, um, yeah, so basically that's where I'm at. And then if that doesn't work, then I will be moving forward with the alanto occipital fusion. And, I mean, the fusion from, actually from C1 to C7. So, um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm in the brace and we're working towards in physical therapy, strengthening my neck to hopefully give me more time out of the brace. Um, so far, I'm lucky to get two hours out a day. I mean, I of course have to take my brace off to shower and, and things like that. But um, when I take it off, and not only is the pain too much, it is the the neurological symptoms are as well. Um, my, my vision, my all of it. Oh, the ringing in the ears, I forgot to mention that. That is constantly, it's constantly ringing. And so anyway, I don't get much time out of the collar, if, if any at all, at this point in time, and so the fusion will be our next option. I'm hoping and praying that it doesn't come to that and that these injections work, but, um, but you know, that is our next, our next step. So, yeah, I, I really I just wanted to share where I was at with all that, because I remember when I um, was searching for answers um, when I had to leave my job I was so devastated that I had to leave my my career and I didn't know that I would ever be well enough to ever return because at that time we just thought I was having daily migraines and so research and research and spent all of my time researching while my kids were at school and I remember being discouraged because there's not a lot of information out there on instability and so I just wanted to put my story out there in hopes of maybe if you're looking to try to find answers, you know, it always helps to hear other people's, other people's stories. So yeah, that's, um, that's where I'm at with that. And I appreciate you being here. 
and I really um, would appreciate if you have been diagnosed with atl atlantoaxial instability, if you could share or if you would feel comfortable sharing below, um, you know, your journey, whether or not you just, you're suspecting it or you were just diagnosed or you've already been fused or, or whatever. If you're undergoing, in, you know, these um, PRP or stem cell injections, I would love to hear your story. So please leave that below. And thanks again for being here. I really appreciate it.